Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sean, as you know, and today I have a special guest with me. His name is Carl Martini. Uh, he is the owner, the CEO of Martini Studios, and I'll have him say a couple words in a second. Uh, but this is really exciting because uh, we are going to be talking about virtual reality today. We're going to be talking about products and the next generation of how people are going to be shopping for products. Uh, so without further ado, uh, here's Carl Martini. Carl, would you like to say a few words about yourself and your studio? Yeah, as, as, as I said, Carl Martini, Martini Studios. Uh, so we invented a, a, a technology to photograph products. Uh, so it's basically we have, um, we're able to create the illusion that we have an anti-gravity machine in our studio and we're able to lift a product, let's say a shoe for example, up off its own shadow and then it can be, as it's, it can be rotated on multiple axes while hovering over its own shadow. So we invented that technology and we have a patent pending on it and we're growing our list of customers. Fantastic. Yeah, so as many of my YouTube uh, subscribers know, I've been involved with the HoloLens for quite some time. Uh, but what you may not have known is I've also been doing a lot with virtual reality, so traditional VR and AR. And uh, Carl, you reached out to me um, a few months ago uh, asking me to do something with the HoloLens, uh, with your spins, and, and we went through a couple prototypes, uh, actually made a holographic representation of some of your spins that you could actually see in the real world. But then we decided to switch directions a little bit and uh, go down to more towards the VR route. Well, well stereography. So uh, yeah. it's, actually, it's actually, stereography is almost as old as photography. If you Google stereoscopy, um, you'll see in the Wikipedia page there is a there is a set of goggles on this thing, and and it's from the 1870s. Wow. So it's just a series of images, and you're viewing them in stereo. And and what you did, Sean, was you're able to interact with it by moving your head around, by changing the axis and, and up and down and left and right, and that's how you're able to interact with the product. Uh, so you've seen uh, some of the uh, actual what it looks like on the PC, but now I'm going to show you uh, what we actually made on the phone. So you can you can see here uh, this is the the raw image. It's very uh, sensitive to the movement, and what you can actually do with this uh, app is you can put it in some VR uh, goggles, and it's kind of hard to see on the camera here, but I'll just give you a little sneak peek. When you turn your head, you're actually able to see the shoe, or any other product for that matter, uh, rotating in full 360, uh, exactly the way that Carl has uh, photographed these images in his studio. Well, it's actually 720 because we do both axes. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it, goes, it, goes, it rolls both ways. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so Carl, tell me a little bit about your vision for where you see this technology going. I think this is the future. Um, I think people will be buying products online using this kind of gear yep. um, in the future. Obviously, it hasn't reached uh, you know critical mass yet. Yep. But uh, we we want to um, we want to be there when it does. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's obviously. There's the expensive goggles, um, you know, the, the the Hololens and all that. But uh, this thing works just fine for this. So, uh, and you, you, you know, this this piece of kit only costs 30 euros. There's no uh, there's no electronics in it. The yep. Google Cardboard, which is made of cardboard, I don't know, you can pick that up for, for $10 or whatever and yeah. assemble it yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so it, it kind of almost is ready for prime time. Once once the applications are built for it, um, you know, I, I think it's really going to work. I, I did this first of all to showcase our you know our studio technology uh, but also you know be ready for when this comes in you know I remember when e-commerce first started to pick up uh, there was a lot of concern about people not being able to hold objects and a lot of the skeptics were saying oh you know e-commerce is never going to be too big because you can't actually go into a physical store and experience the products like you do well it turns out e-commerce is booming quite a lot but that's still a missing piece today is experiencing the the products and there's been images and there's been you know different ways to compensate for that but we're not quite there yet and I definitely yeah. agree with you I, I feel like this is a major step towards having people being able to truly experience the products before they buy yeah absolutely so, so you know the goal or, or the limitation of e-commerce you know in spite of a success uh, is you can't touch and feel a product mm -hmm. um, now, granted, you can't do that here either, but you're getting it as close as possible to actually, you know, holding it in your hand. If you're in a store, um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna view it from all angles and have a good old look at it. And yep. uh, you can't do that with a still photograph. You just have to trust that what you see, you know, arrives in the door. And that's another thing. 
uh, this kind of spin technology uh, reduces returns because it you know, represents the product with honesty and fidelity at the point of purchase. Yeah, and, and I feel like you know down the road in the future, being able to actually see these products maybe on your desk or on your floor uh, is, is key. And, and we kind of did that a little bit with the HoloLens, but maybe you can describe uh, some of your initial thoughts and, and why we decided to steer away from that, at least for now. So there's 72 images go, goes into this spin, 36 on each axis. And I sent them over to you and you were able to pump them into the, the VR engine, the HoloLens VR engine, mm -hmm. and it was able to create a wireframe um, shoe. So it knew the shape of the shoe yep. and then it kind of wrapped the photographs around it. Yep. But the problem that became immediately apparent is VR engines don't understand texture. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, depending on the texture, you know, it reflects light differently. Yep. Um, and it just applied a generic texture mm -hmm. uh, halfway between being matte and, 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 and shiny. Yeah. And that's a problem, you know. So you could give it a patent leather shoe and a suede shoe mm -hmm. and it would think it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it's not fooling anyone. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying something online, if you're going <laughs> to drop, if you're going to drop like a couple of hundred dollars on a product, um, you know, you want to think you're actually looking at what the real product looks like. Yep. So, so I think it falls down for e-commerce. Now, I, I, I know they're making progress, but it's not there yet. It yep. really isn't. Yeah, I, w I was impressed that, you know, we could see spatially the size of the the products, but I definitely agree. It had a, a CGI look. You could definitely tell this was not a photograph. This was a 3D rendering of the actual yeah. products. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely agree. <laughs> so, so in a sense, what we've done is actually lower tech, but the results are actually, you know, more honest. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. okay, everyone. So again, this is uh, Carl Martini. Uh, be sure to check out the video description below. I've got links to his uh, social media profiles, his website, uh, www.carlmartini.com. Um, all the description is down below. So yeah, let us know if you have any comments, if you have any questions for Carl. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Hey, Carl. Bye-bye. <laughs>